Today I'm at the Denver cluster of stations for Crawford Broadcasting. Now Crawford Broadcasting was founded in 1959 by Dr. Percy B. Crawford, who by 1960 had grown his broadcasting company to six stations nationwide. And today there are over 20 stations nationwide. Crawford has a wonderful, amazing group of engineers who have a great little newsletter that kind of give you a little insight into the industry of broadcasting and broadcasting engineering. And I'll link to that in the description below. Today I'm at the studios for their Denver cluster. And yes, I am right next to a road here. So it is really loud. Uh, but I'm getting a tour of their studios from their chief engineer, Amanda Hopp, and her dad, the director of engineering, Chris Alexander. This, this is our, uh, I guess, we, you know, we used to call it the engineering room, but now we just call it the talk, TOC. Um, this, the first rack here, it's, uh, it has our audio transport, having to think of the wording. Um, we love Tyline, and so we use their gateways. Uh, we have two gateway eights, one's the main, one's the backup. And then from here, it goes to, uh, t we have two gateway fours at two different locations, and then the other three locations are the Bridget extras. And that's just how we send our audio to our various, we have a total of five tower sites. Uh, we have the Bridgets uh, are for our remotes. We have hosts that call in uh, when they go out of town and stuff, and they'll use these. And then EAS uh, monitoring. And then we just have some satellites, uh, various you know internet satellite receivers. I don't know why they still call them satellite receivers if it's the internet, but uh, this is our all of our servers. We, here in Denver, we host uh, the Crawford Broadcasting, all of our websites. Um, so we have somewhere, we have a web server, the backup web server, a firewall for the web servers. Um, we, we host our FTP, so we have a corporate FTP site, as well as a, uh, just a plain company, one that clients can uh, either send us shows or we send them their recordings. Uh, this also has like our various firewalls um, and file servers for the local in-house people. This is our automation. Uh, we have we use RCS's Zeta, and so we have the audio servers for our four stations. Uh, we pair each station with a, a Wheatstone blade, and we just uh, at the time we were kind of a. a a bridge system we had wheatnet plus their tdm system and so it's kind of so we ended up having a, a blade for each station we have a firewall for our automation as well as the file servers for that and then this here would be we have our delays we have more wheatstone um, we had i'm trying to remember what we had here I think we just did a, a, a Worldcast Horizon in this spot, and then when we moved to the gateway, we upgraded to the blade and just put it, there, there was, you know, a spot, so we put it in there. But once again, we, we kind of keep everything separated, so we have one station, one station, one station. And then we use the barracks as a uh, our, our backup audio transport. We have. We only have one internet provider here at the studio, but at each of our other sites, we have microwave, which gets the internet from here, as well as backup internet. And with the uh, Omnia 9s that we use, it'll switch over automatically so that we don't have to, so that hopefully we don't you know, lose anything if it's all working the way it should. Um, but yeah, we had backed before, uh, we went full Wheatnet in January of 2021, I believe. No, December. December. December of 2020, because it was the end of that time, and things were still weird. But when that was, this whole back wall, you can kind of see it where everything was. But yeah, we had big, oh, yeah. big, big bundles of cables that came down, and we ended up taking it all out of here. Uh, and now it's just it's. <laughs> Everything's uh, uh, Cat Five, but uh, but yeah, that's our engineering room. I mean, there's not a whole lot. We got a, we got a decent workbench and 
spare equipment that we keep around. We have a generator downstairs. Yeah, we do have a generator. Always yeah, when we moved in here, this was a different radio station that wasn't here for very long. And so it was really nice because uh, it had pipes to all the rooms. Oh, nice. You know, the, the, the Ethernet was all run. We just had, I, my mom and I actually ran around with a sniffer and was, we were, you know, <laughs> marking all these cables so we knew what room went to where. And But it made it real easy because when we moved in. And how long have you guys been here? Since 2010. Okay. So, yes, man, yeah. Yeah, that was a... Yeah, we went from a much bigger engineering room with seven racks to, and this is before everything became computerized, to having four racks that were packed full, and now as, as things keep improving, the rack, you know, the, we don't have, there's so much rack space. <laughs> yeah, just a server room. Yeah, it's nice. I have a, I'm able to. Nice yeah, I, you know, I can, I can get, I, I have, yeah, I don't have every, I have like 16 computers plugged in, but it, yeah, it just makes it nice that I can, while I'm in here, I can look at stuff and figure it out. Mine's a card I have to roll around and plug into the front. You know, we're probably getting there at some point. This thing is like probably uh, 1999. Have you ever had an audio issue that just made you upset? But don't worry, because one of the sponsors for today's video has you covered. Angry Audio offers all sorts of gadgets and gizmos from headphone disconnectors to prevent you from ripping the headphone jack right out of the console to mic processors and software to make your streams sound amazing. I wanna focus on something specific the Angry Audio Rave. It's their powerful yet affordable audio console built for radio stations just like yours. The Rave has eight stereo line inputs, up to four microphone inputs, two output mix buses, two mix minus outputs, a monitor feed for your control room, and so much more. The Rave is made of anodized aluminum, silky smooth faders, and tally outputs for your on-air light. Get major market quality at small market prices. Learn more at angryaudio.com. Thank you, Angry Audio, for sponsoring this video. Well, we can come look at one of, one of the studios. You know, like at this one. She doesn't like to be disturbed on her show, <laughs> but there's nobody in here. So uh, this is KLZ 560. The, we're a Wheatstone company. We love Wheatstone. They use their LXE consoles. Um, this project was, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the end, uh, the end of 2020. This was our our last, our last studio that we did. There's actually a YouTube video that he did, uh, that yeah. Chris did. That, uh, he put a camera here, and we just did a time lapse of us. Nice. It was it was me, him, my husband, and my mom doing it so that nice. day. It took three minutes to do this studio to take it all the way to bare wood. Yeah. And Bring it back up, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, three minutes, um, at least on the YouTube. Video. Right. But yeah, we really like Wheaton. Uh, their uh, their consoles have HDMI. So you can see into them. Yeah, I mean nobody here uses it because they're all too afraid. But yeah, I mean it's just you know you can do every like. That's a touch screen. You, can you know, I can change my source here. Or I can come here and change my source, um, especially like on the control room speakers, the headphones that are in here, as you know, as well as the studio. It's a lot easier to come here and you know choose what you want to listen to. Um, they usually don't use that, so we keep it on in here at least um, that X screen program for the phones. But yeah, as you can see, there's the, the good old V-set that we use. That's the same V-set that we were using with the HX. Yeah, the, yeah, that's what they use with these. with the VX as well. So. You know, we, we could have eight, eight mic, six mics. We have six mics. You know, one on each channel here. 
But what we did is we had, like I said, the virtual mixer there, and it's all one channel here. Um, and so he's the, uh, the two guys that typically work in here. They can turn on whatever mics they want and set it, and then do the rest on the console. But it's a uh, yeah. So it's, does the talent in the studio control their own mics, or no. other than on off type of thing? No. Yeah. Not even that. Not anymore. We used to. And there were accidents would happen, but yeah, we use a uh, Sage. But yeah, as you can see, we have Bridget in here as well. Mm -hmm. um, this station has their own dedicated unit because they this this is the busiest station. We have you know hosts in the morning, uh, six to eight, and then uh, some days we have uh, eight to nine, noon to pretty much. Although today's a slow day, but typically noon until six o'clock at night, the studio is busy with different different shows going on and yeah they use that but yeah this is all of the blades for in here um, we have mic blades that's where the mics come in and then we can use the virtual mixer and then there's different you know uh, console blade engine blade um, so but yeah that's how we get make the magic happen in here console blade is just uh, ins and outs mm -hmm. it's uh Essentially, uh, monitor, monitor out, headphones. headphones, cue, you know, whatever. I know, yeah, you can see you can see our beautiful wiring. We're so proud of it. <laughs> this is how everything should look. Oh, it's gorgeous. Once we start making changes, that's when it'll get really sloppy. Yeah, this is gorgeous. Yeah, just a that's little dusty, good. but not too shabby. Well, hey, this was a change. Oh, this was the old Telos. This was yeah. the HX. Yeah, we kept that in there it's just in case. Still there. Yeah, well, we did it just in case. That's our backup. Yeah, this is kind of cool. These mic blades have. Uh, oh yeah. They have USB ports on them, and uh, if you plug your computer in there, it shows up as a sound source and destination in in Wheatnet. Oh. And your computer will recognize it as a sound device, just like a sound card. That's cool. So, uh, we have this. Route it through. You can go in there and look. Uh, yeah, this is where my husband came in handy. My husband made this tabletop. Oh, nice. But yeah, he also drilled a hole where we put the USB in, and so yeah, they just plug they can just plug laptop. the computer you can in. Play and stuff. Nice. Yeah. Right on the air. From right really in here, cool. if he wants. That's just kind of a cool feature uh, that they uh, that Wheatstone thought of. Very useful. Yeah. Feature. We uh, we put an on-air light in this studio just so that they they requested it to host it just that way they know for a fact on they're on the air that their mics are hot and we also uh, installed another monitor just so that they can it's mainly one host but it's whenever um, you know the show's going on they can see the what's going on and what's coming up on the play screen and plan accordingly uh, you know just in case but yeah this room has a Pretty good view. Uh, we love it. Each, you know, the hosts have they can adjust their their headphones to their liking. Um, they can plug into the internet. And they got a cough switch. Or, uh, so, do you often have six people in no. there, or is that just like just in case one of those? But once in a while, they will. But not yeah, often. I mean, we. It's usually one or two. Yeah, the host has the nice the nicer mic. We got the, the, the RE320. Typically, it's two to three people. But yeah, every once in a while, they'll, they'll fill it up. It gets pretty uncomfortable with six people in here. Then we got every studio has their own vinyl on the wall. We have, like I said, every, every room's pretty much the same. It's not a whole lot to see in these rooms. Yeah, the door is open. It's an oldie. 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 It's a hosted oldie show. Hi, thanks for calling Legends Radio. We already have a winner, but I can take a guess. Uh, what's your telephone number again? It was Perry Mason. Well, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Of course. Bye. Yeah, we can bug her. Hey, can I show him in here real quick? You know, you can stay if you need to. I, it's not a big deal. I'm just oh, showing them. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we use the uh, 
Wheatstone E6 consoles. They actually customized those for us to match the G6 consoles we used to have in the control room. <laughs> but so, but now it doesn't matter. They don't, you know, it doesn't look like the LXE. But you know, same kind of same kind of deal. It's just a smaller smaller console, with Zeta with Audition, uh, and then there's a you know a smaller monitor that has the metering for the console. But you have your your blades, power supply. And then we're moving to the really small micro computers. Uh, it's just nice. Everything's getting smaller. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, this is just where they do production. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you being here. And thank you to Amanda and Chris for their hosting uh, me through their studios. You know, it's, it's always a little nerve wracking giving other people a look at, you know, the work that you've done. But you know what? They've done a great job. And I really appreciate engineers who spend the time to do it right the first time. I will admit there have been times where I just got it done quick and had to come back and do it right later. But you know, it's part of the part of the gig sometimes. Anyways, uh, thank you again to Chris and uh, Amanda for hosting and thank you to you for watching this video. And until next time, keep learning. <laughs>